Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be latency testing the Cadex Micro F1 Turbo FPV camera. Now this is a $20 camera which is a very good it it's, it's very good in price. However, you know, it has some things that are a bit scary. It's a CMOS, so that's why I really wanted to do the latency testing on it because CMOS uh, usually has bad exposure, you know, when it's with transitions from super dark to light or when you look at the sun or something. So this is the reason why I'm actually wanting to actually do the FPV latency testing. And that's also going to be a new part of the channel. I finally got it down. I have a nice setup and I'm getting pretty nice uh, results here. So let's quickly talk about this camera. Now this camera weighs 4.8 grams. Now this thing doesn't, it comes with it, but I have placed it on. So when I was doing latency testing, it was helping me. Uh, they do give you an OSD uh, control button here, remote thingy. And what this thing, you know, what's so cool about this, is you can actually switch between 16 by 9 and 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which I really, really, really love. And it's also a 1200 TVL line, which means it's good quality. It has a 2.1 millimeter lens, which is good field of view when you're flying. Um, so overall, you know, this thing is just a beauty, really. It's a beauty. And I've actually tested it and it was just awesome, actually. So it takes 4.5 volts to 40 volts. So that is also a huge, huge plus. So you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, you can just power it off basically anything you want. Now, I, I really don't recommend you do that. You just give it 5 volts and uh, you should be good to go. Because I believe the internals are powered off by either 3.3 .3 volts or 5 volts. So if you put anything above 5 volts, it'll, you know, not just on this one, anything. Uh, it'll kind of add a little extra stress on it. It'll get kind of warm and you can reduce lifespan of, of Components like that. Plus, just stick it on a 5 volt regulator and you're good to go But if you can't it's totally fine. You can put it wherever you want. I'm just saying just a little warning um, Overall, I've tested this guy. He tested absolutely insanely beautiful and uh, you know what enough talking and let's just actually test its latency So let's get started guys. All right guys So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do some latency testing on this camera and let me just quickly show you my methodology here so obviously we're going to be using an oscilloscope, uh, listening on two channels, and I'll explain that in a bit. I have this nice little box with an RGB LED, and I'll explain why. And the camera is in here, and obviously this would be closed. And here's a little, you know, uh, screen. It's There's no purpose to it, just eye candy, just something to see, because I know some people like to see this. And it's just a little nice extra feature to have here. Now this is the uh, Fatshark DIY screen that we built for the channel that takes Fatshark modules. And we remember we added a little camera tester kind of port thingy on the side, so that's what I'm using here. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss what I'm doing here. So I have an Arduino right there, and this is controlling the RGB LED, and I have two types of testing. One, which is from full-blown darkness to just completely lit up with white LEDs. And the second test, because some people don't like that test, they say when it when the camera transitions from black and white, there is also extra latency, and that sometimes never usually happens while you're flying. That's fine. So I've also done a different kind of test, and as you can see right here, the LED is always on, there's always light, however, the colors change. And we can actually see the colors changing on the oscilloscope, and also calculate latency based upon that. And uh, I'll have those two types in an Excel sheet, and I will be doing a lot more uh, testing of these cameras. So this is the Cadex, and what we're going to do now, we're going to take a quick measurement and seeing what we get. Now, I've, got, I've never gotten it more than a 4 millisecond delay latency. So the worst result was always like 3.9 to 4 milliseconds. Everything else was always below, which, you know, if you look online, it's on Oscar Leong's website. This is by far the fastest FPV camera, you know, on his testing, his testing methodology. However, as time goes on, I will be testing more cameras and we can actually see things in depth. Now here, I've also did something because I was, you know, I wasn't really sure. I was like, why am I, th this, is this really the fastest camera out there? Or am I doing something wrong? So I created two buttons here, and this is to add an offset between frames because, you know, there's these little lines and those are basically like frames or lines or whatever you want to call them. And what does, you know, I try to align it to see, to get it perfect, uh, to get perfect results. And it's still, you know, no more than four milliseconds, which is pretty insane. Actually, it is. It, it's a quick one. So uh, we can actually see the exposure transition also. So after, you know, it picks up, you know, that it's full bright, you know how it takes a while to actually uh, calm down and the exposure fix itself so you can actually see what you're looking at. I've also have a, a method. We could actually see how long that takes and that'll be in the Excel sheet. This video will be too long for me to show you that. I will have the Excel sheet along with the video. 
So let's go ahead and take our first sample. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the Arduino here to go from dark to full blown white. So let's do that first here. And I'm just going to quickly change the program. All right. So while it's updating right there, it's going to start going from, you know, no LED to white LED. So let's just double check that it's going to do that. It's stuck. So there we go. Off, on, off, on. All right. So let's go ahead and drop this guy in here. Okay. So we have that inside. We have our camera here. Now, usually when I do this, that, you know, that light right there is not showing, but it's still a good reference. So we can actually see things going on. So here we have the oscilloscope going and let's go ahead and take our first measurement. So, all right. So our first measurement is in and let's check this out together. All right. So there's two lines, as you can see down here, there's a purple line that's going up and then there is a yellow line. This is the video feed and this is when the LED turns on right there. So that's when the LED turns on inside. And as you can see here, this is when it was all dark and then you can see a total difference right there when the LED is on. So we're going to zoom in and see the, you know, where it changed. So as you can see here, here's the LED. It went on. And it took about this much to actually start noticing it. This is where it f picked up the full amount of color right around this area here. So let's go ahead and see how many milliseconds that took. So I'm taking my cursor to right where this turned on. And now I'm taking the second one. We'll just say around here. That is 2.3 milliseconds. But if you want to go all the way to where it's super flat, that's 3.3 milliseconds. So this camera is hella quick, like very quick. It's just beautifully quick. So uh, f this is just awesome, really. So let's just take another sample since we can. Let's go ahead and take another one here. All right, there we go. We got another one. So let's go ahead and do this again. Like I said, this is where the light turns on and you know our first cursor is correctly right on it. Let's go ahead and move the second cursor. Um, so right as you know, the peak of the transition around here, that's two milliseconds. So it does start noticing a lot earlier. So it would actually start noticing in one millisecond range, which is pretty insane actually. And if you go to the absolutely, you know, uh, solid line, that's around 3.1 milliseconds. So it, it's a very consistent one to three maximum of a four millisecond. So I rarely get four milliseconds of latency on this. Now, again, this is testing from dark you know, no light to full blown light. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change it to colors. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you can see it's just changing colors now between green and blue. So the camera's probably not picking it up pretty good, but it doesn't really matter. So let's just take a look at the oscilloscope. You can totally see the difference. And now let's see the latency on this one. So let's go ahead and do this now. All right, we're going to take our first measurement right here. There we go. So let's just zoom in here and see what we see. So where's the cursor? So this is where the color changed. Uh, I forgot which one's blue and which one's green, but it really doesn't matter. We can see the change as you can see right there. So let's just go ahead and say change around here, I think. And we'll just double check it right now. So I'm aligning the first part where the LED actually changed. And right around here, it's actually started, it took the color here, but this is all the exposure kind of thing going on here. As you can see, that's where it really stopped uh, seeing the, let's just say blue. It's around 2.8, around three milliseconds it really picked up. And in here it's just, uh, you know, just doing its little exposure, I think, setting up right there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hella quick. This thing is hella quick. Like, uh, yeah, right there. Let's just say four milliseconds. Yeah, that's right. You know, it actually was a little bit before. 3.3 milliseconds. That is still pretty quick. But if, you know, if you wanted to give worst case scenario, or I don't know what you want to do, that's 5.9 milliseconds. So let's just take another sample, see what we get again. It's still below the four milliseconds in my opinion, but you know, everyone has their own opinion. Uh, this is what I am going, this is what I'm measuring on. So let's go ahead and do another zoom here. And as you can see right there, we caught it right before that. That's perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and take a measurement here. We'll just say right around here, which is 3.6, you know, you could say four milliseconds, but it's actually right there, right at that gap right there, which is 2.8 milliseconds, really. So this thing is, you know, we could say one milliseconds to four milliseconds maximum. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a beauty. It's really, really, really a nice little camera so far. I'm really loving this camera. So let's go ahead and 
take another measurement. There it is right there. You can see the difference, the change. So let's just zoom in here. Oh, wrong zoom. All right, so this one's a little bit different. This one's gonna be better because we didn't have the uh, sink in the middle of our test, our little result here. All right, so as you can see here, you have this line, this thick line, and it just spreads out. That's due to the color change. And you can actually say that the color actually knew the color change was right about here, which is 2.8 milliseconds. It's pretty consistent. Uh, four milliseconds, 3.6 milliseconds, it actually completely knew. So let's just do a little, another zoom here. And we just take a closer look here. Let's bring this into frame. Yeah, I'd actually noticed a lot earlier than that, to be honest. So let's just see here. This is where the LED color changed. And let me grab the second cursor. Yeah, we could say about here, which is, yeah, 3.9 milliseconds, 3.9. So. 2.7 yeah, it's still below f 4 milliseconds so this is pretty good I will I'll do more tests and I will add um, possibly some screenshots and uh, also just a, a nice beautiful Excel sheet so this is another thing that I'm gonna be documenting on the channel if you're interested in this stuff with the price and everything and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty interesting I really can't wait so right now I'm just currently waiting on uh, my uh, power supply to do a very thorough tests on the ESCs uh, and the you know BL heli commands because so far I'm noticing that the 75% area range of throttle is the noisiest and maybe with timing we can actually fix that so if you know what throttle level you usually fly on uh, then you could probably get a good timing you know we're just gonna play with the settings and see what I come up with and just do a lot of research and just document and show you guys everything so it's gonna be pretty interesting. Uh, I'll also be doing stress testing of ESCs and actually burning a couple on fire, seeing how well they could um, last and, and how good they are, you know? And I think that's gonna conclude it for this video, you guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope you guys liked this content. Please leave a like, comment, like down below if you do. If you don't, put a dislike so I know what to do. Uh, if you didn't like the testing or you have any ideas or theories, also leave them down in the comment section. I will be checking everything. And um, yeah, so whatever you guys think, just let me know down in the comment section. I just wanted to thank you guys again. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here today. And uh, I would like to ask if you guys could consider joining the mission, joining my Patreon, help support this channel, help me do more tests and just dedicate full time to this and uh, not have to worry about anything. Just, you know, just researching, documenting and just creating content of everything I can. And um, yeah, that, that's that's all I really want to do. I'm just I just really love this here. And um yeah, and if you can't join Patreon, it's totally fine. Your likes, your comments. Uh, if you're going to go ahead, you know, I do have affiliate links down there. You know, you could go ahead and use those. You don't even have to purchase the same thing in the link. You could just click on it right before you make your order. It gives me a couple cents. It allows me to bring in more cameras to do more testing and uh, ESCs and just, you know, just overall supports the channel uh, and help it grow and um, document everything we possibly can. And that, that's the whole goal and aim of this channel so i really hope you guys enjoyed the content i really hope it was very useful to someone and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and i will see you next time guys take care